What's up everybody? So this is a quick tutorial where we'll be going over React search filters and finishing up the functionality. So to quickly recap what we did in previous tutorial, it was that we created filters. We also set up Redux store and used the state from Redux to store filters so as to which filters have been selected so it would be available easily to all our rest of the components we also created a data table and displayed the data only thing that we were missing is that when filters were selected we were not filtering out the data in the table so yeah let's go ahead and use the redux state in our table component okay so what i'm doing here is going to the search bar and i'll be adding passing props to the search bar the reason for this is that even though we have an input uh, in the search bar it never gets has to the rest of the filters that we have stored in our redux state so yeah we do need to store this in redux state as well so we can later on use it um, to filter out the data so in here just passing the function that would be uh, fired when input text gets updated let's create also state locally to store the text so in here I'm naming it search value and using the use state hook to create the state, which is also of like type string and initial value of it is like empty string. Here in on the input, we're gonna add on change function and update the state as user starts typing into our input. So we pick up target the value, set it as our state. And next thing we want to do is we want to fire this function on input update which has been passed as props and to do that we can use use effect hook and dependency in the use effect hook would be text itself and on the effect would be that this uh, function would get fired and yeah let's add the dependency which is search value and store this going back to the index uh, page we can make some, like store the value here uh, and create actually the function that we do want to pass to the search bar because search bar is called from index.tsx file. So I'm um, creating that on search text update, taking in just the text, which is of type string. And we are dispatching event as we did on previous uh, filters, which is update filters and passing in category and the text. So let's import at the top also clear filters and update filters. Clear filters will need that for our clear button on the search bar. And then we need to define our dispatch function using use um, dispatch. Um, and we can uh, now like pass this um, input base um, input update function to our search bar so this should not be getting errors because we do pass two arguments to update filters um, oh it's not dispatch event it's just dispatch okay so going back to when we start typing, we can see that the Redux state is getting updated. Um, so now let's go back to the search bar. And another thing that we want to do is we don't want on every keystroke the component to be re-rendered. So let's add a little bit of like um, delay using this debounce and only fire this redux state function um, after let's say a couple of seconds that user has started typing so i'm gonna pass um, 3000 which is like three seconds or milliseconds and after that because we set up the timer in use effect we need to make sure that once uh, uh, the component is um, unmounted to clear that timer and another state we want is we want to make sure when the search button is enabled or disabled. So let's create a state for that. And in use effect, we can determine if it should be set as enabled or disabled. So if search bar is empty, obviously we don't want the button to show. So 
if search value equals equals to empty string and if button is like not disabled then we can set button disabled to true otherwise it should just um, remain false so set button disabled um, now to the false and we will pass down the state to the button that we have here so disabled equals to button disabled before that we just had hard-coded value for the disabled which was set to true and let's also pass in um, on clear function which we'll need when clear um, would be um, pressed and in here let's create the function that we will be passing to our search bar so on clear search text, let's set on clear search text equals to, it's not going to be taking in any um, parameters just because we're going to be clearing tests, so we don't need any values. And we'll be dispatching, it's a, we don't have to create new um, function for that, we can reuse update filters and just set the text to empty string, that, that means that the text is cleared. And, uh, and then pass this function to the search bar. Okay, going back to the filters, now let's see also has on click to our clear all uh, button, which is part of the filters. And going to the data table, we need to now import the state of Redux of all the filters selected. And based on the values that have been selected, we want to uh, filter out the data. So these are some of the functions, use selector, use dispatch, and root state, or any for the type. And let's get the filter, so that would be using use selector. We'll get the state, and we'll get the state of the filters reducer. Mm. And then we would determine if any of the elements should be displayed. So basically this function should display, we'll take in the transaction will determine if transaction matches any of the filters. So going over first one, we have price. Just because price is in string, we're going to be using parse in transaction amount. Also, it contains dollar sign, so we're going to replace and remove that dollar sign. Next one, we have if it matches um, search text. So we'll take the search text from the filter. And if it does not equal to if it's empty then it does match to the search text otherwise we're gonna take the lowercase version of it and see if it includes the um, text next one we have matches category similar logic in here in, but instead categories are array so in the array we'll find if at least one category is um, the same as the transaction category so transaction dot category in here and then next one we have matches the vendor um, so as you know we have vendor name for the transaction so first checking if vendors are even selected or their length is more than zero second checking if vendors array at least one element is same as transaction dot vendor lower um, case vendor um, and then next one we have the price so we already converted price to the acceptable value so we're just gonna make sure it exists and if the length is equal um, to two because as you remember we have um, price range so it would be two elements and then we'll be checking if our price falls within that range and at the end, uh, we're going to return if at least like one of these values are true. Actually, we'll compare all the values. So all these values need to be true. And then we'll take the next function that would use the filter um, function itself and would compare using the should display method that we have just created. So taking in any transaction and um, using that method to determine if that transaction should be displayed or not. So let's go select um, category groceries. Um, 
actually so yeah our key name needs to be unique that's why our categories didn't display properly so now let's add the index because some of the names were similar so as you can see we have the correct filtering right now of the grocery category and let's update a little bit styling so i'm gonna move all the table cell um in like the data inside on the left side same thing for the column itself and um, add some background color like gray to um, our table head so we can differentiate you know column names uh, versus the names of the rest of the cells of the body so okay that said going back to filters updating some styling here so we can remove the display um, of the row and adding the display flex here because for some reason it does not um, recognize inside of sx um, justify corner we do want space between for all the filters and um, let's see what else we have so for the drop down wrapper same thing in line flex i'm trying to make sure that all the filters um, kind of look the same even though inside the drop down they are of different kinds um, so setting height same thing to auto and then also setting minimum height just so that all the fil filters are of the same height um, so this is just copied from the other heights um, and let's see updating the padding um, then again to match the others mm what else we have here and this is just divider that i had created previously so this is to divide the search bar with from other filters so let's go back to the div divider this is just the sample that a component that i had created so in here comment plus and i can in the file update without actually switching to the file so let's just add some padding um to to RAM and moving on to the search bar some of the adding margin at the bottom so it has some space between divider and itself and here in the filters container we're going to be adding padding at the top same thing so that we have space between divider and the filters so let's see yeah it looks way better and um going okay one more thing we're going to be changing the background color and also the width of the search okay so now this matches my like original design this where we have um check boxes instead we actually want to display the label of the filter here we have our data displayed so let's go ahead select grocery um, next thing let's check uh, the price range uh, if it's working correctly and uh, I remove the category um, set again to maybe baby okay so here it is this would be all let me know if you have any other questions or would like to see more redux tutorials and typescript like this one Thank you so much. Please make sure to subscribe and leave a comment of what you would like to see next.